It's funny. I just asked he Anthony how to say it. Yeah, but now Steve you forgot it. Say it. And they both said something different, so right. it really threw me off. But it's Cuyahoga. Yeah, there you go. We'll Mary. give you credit and for Anthony that. Anthony says Cuyahoga, and he's wrong now. It's he's a weirdo. Yeah. Don't Jason, you went there. What's the profession? No, I went to Lorraine County Community College. Lorraine, okay. But I, I, I'm with you. I said Cuyahoga. Yeah. Cuyahoga County. with Cuyahoga. him. He says it different. But I'm a Lorraine County dude, so yeah. I don't live in. And there's we no have debate Mary on Kay? how to say Lorraine. We have Mary Kay, yes. Mary Kay, is it Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga? She says Hoga, right, Mary Kay? I say Haga. Haga. Oh, my God. Oh, no way. I thought only people from Parma said Haga. That's what I was told. <laughs> this is the show where everyone just beats up on Bull. Didi wouldn't take the victory lap, but Mary Kay just. Actually, I think I do say Haga. I don't even know that what I say. I'm definitely a Cuyahoga. Hey, Mary Kay, I thought it was really interesting. You know, Joe Woods gets fired yesterday. I thought that Mike Prefer should get fired as well. Once they had the press conference, I assumed he wasn't getting fired. But Kevin Stefanski was asked twice in the press conference about uh, Mike Prefer, and he didn't say that he definitely has the job. Is does Mike Pre is Mike Prefer definitely staying, or is there a chance he's going to be fired today or tomorrow? You know, I really think that Kevin wanted to take care of uh, priority number one, and that was to fire Joe Woods and start lining up some interviews with these defensive coordinator candidates. I don't think he had those conversations yet with everybody else, and I think it was maybe still up in the air a little bit. But I think the fact that uh, Mike Prefer has survived to this point is probably a good sign for him. Uh, so, you know, I would have okay. to say that I, you know, I think right now, he, you know, Kevin's probably leaning towards keeping him. But I think those two guys need to put their heads together and have a conversation. All right, so it's not a done deal. What was your big takeaway from yesterday? I mean, if you had a takeaway, because we had talked earlier at the start of the show how all these guys in, in the vein of Belichick are sort of mastered the art of moving their lips but not really saying a whole lot. What was your sort of takeaway moment or, you know, if they had an overlying statement, what was it that, that stood out to you? Well, um, if we're talking about from, you know, Andrew and Kevin, my takeaway there was that they do understand that they have to get the right mix of guys in there on their defense. And I think that means schematically from a talent standpoint, from a, you know, veteran versus young guy standpoint and from, you know, a leadership standpoint. So I think that they really need uh, to craft that defense in such a way that they've got some great leaders. I don't know that they have any great leaders yet on the defense. I know Miles has taken over a much more vocal role, but they need more guys like that. Some of the young guys are going to have to step up into those roles. I've covered uh, NFL locker rooms before where you've got three or four sort of enforcer guys on the defense, like the old school Sheldon Richardson kind of guys, or back in the day, you know, the Carl Banks and Pepper Johnson kind of guys. Uh, where they sort of, you know, help run the program and they, you know, keep everybody in check. I remember when Miles Garrett had the helmet incident and Baker Mayfield, you know, kind of went off on him on national television right after that. Sheldon Richardson stepped in as an old school guy and he really salvaged that situation. He put those two guys back together as best he could, Miles and Baker. Uh, you know, he and Olivier Vernon took baker aside and said that's not how we roll here so i think they need some of those kind of guys uh, i think they need to be careful of adding guys to the team that do have behavioral problems strong personalities are fine but you have to be very judicious in adding guys onto the team that aren't going to buy into the program or that are going to be speaking out about things because even when you look back at Jadavian Clowney, you need that guy to be you know carrying the banner uh, for your program and what you're doing. And that just did not happen. So I think getting the right mix, as Andrew mentioned yesterday, was my biggest takeaway. Mary Kay, I said earlier, Jadavian was probably the most vocal and not necessarily in a good way. Is that fair or wrong? Uh, no, I, I think that's right. I think I think that's right. Because when you have a big booming personality like that, uh, but the stuff that's being boomed out isn't all about you know how we are uh, going to abide by what Kevin's doing. We are going to abide by what Joe Woods wants. Uh, that you know that just can't be uh, the voice in the locker room or one of the main voices in the locker room. I mean, when you've got your Pro Bowl guys are the guys that everybody looks up to. So you've got Miles, you've got Jadavian, you've got Denzel Ward. Those guys have got to be rock 
solid. And if you don't have that, then you've got to go out and get it. You've got to go find those guys that are going to make sure that there's complete buy-in with the program. And we started to hear that with Miles towards the end of the season where he was going to bat for Joe Woods. Now, did he really feel that way about Joe Woods? You know, maybe he was just trying to hold it together during the season, and that was what was necessary for the moment. They need more of that. Mary Kay, um, Adam Nabool said something yesterday, and I, I totally agree with him. Um, they, you know, they got one more year here to, to figure out what they're going to do and to make the playoffs and get this thing off the ground. Or I, I think they're just not going to be here after after next year. He, Bull said he believes they have to go all in. And what he means all in is they have to do turn every tire over to get more players or the right players in here. And I don't know if they have the um, picks to do it. I don't know if they got the cap space to do it. But I don't think they can be conservative like they were last year and, and count on young players to come in and just be grade A players off the bat. Because to me, I look at it, they got about six games. If they don't hit the ground running and, and Deshaun Watson doesn't look like <coughs> he's back to Deshaun Watson of old, I think this is going to be a, a very a tough way for Kevin Stefanski to turn it around. Well, I do think that, um, you know, that they really hope that a lot of those young guys were going to step up in their second seasons. The JOKs, the Grant Delp, it's really his second full season on the field. Uh, the, the Greg Newsoms, the Jordan Elliotts, the Jacob Phillips, they really expected that those guys were going to pop this year. And none of them really did. In fact, nope. some of them regressed. And some of the reasons why they did be, were because – some of them didn't feel that they were being used the way that it maximized their talents and abilities. We've heard Greg Newsom say, you know, I had to move over into that nickel cornerback role and it was, you know, it was an adjustment period and it was, it was mentally tough and physically tough to be able to do that. Now, is, is he going to be much better at that in his second season? Or does he really want to go back to, you know, working on the outside and, and seeing if he can't build on what he did as a rookie? Uh, you know, even Jadavian Clowney, to a certain extent, if you find out that early on in the season that he's upset about getting put on the tougher link on the offensive line, I think he needs to be heard about that. It doesn't mean that you have to do anything about it right away or that you have to appease him. Uh, but I think these guys need to feel like they can go in and say what they need to say. John Johnson three, we saw him play um, multi roles with the Rams and he, he didn't do that as much here. And I think he's another player that, you know, maybe, you know, there's more to him than he's been able to show so far. So I think the new defensive coordinator is going to have to try to find a way to bring out the best in these players. Ask them, talk to them, find out what they really want to do, whether it's, you know, the, something else in the scheme, whether it's something else they would like to try in another area of, of the football team, whatever the case may be. Did you, you want your player do that because he spoke out publicly and he was gone. I think he, from what I understand, he did try to express himself, probably, especially after that Baltimore game, I mean, he might have made it clear. And by that time, you know, it might be too late because of the way he went about that. Um, but I think these guys need to be able to say how they feel about how they're being used. You want your players to be happy and to be playing to their strengths. You want them to feel that they can express themselves. And then you want there to be some locker room sort of accountability. There's got to be guys in the locker room that are, that are going to say, hey, this isn't how we roll. This isn't how we do things. And there needs to be more of that. Mary Kay, did you just get some breaking news that you want to tell us about in that text there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. But, but you know that, you know, it, you know, in this kind of a role, you know, you're all, you always have to have, you know, your peripheral vision going. Absolutely. So. You never know, especially this week, right? I mean, this is the week where the Browns, sadly, unfortunately, make a lot of news, and it rarely has anything to do with a playoff game. Uh, is there any fear whatsoever for in within the organization, based on what you know, that, because the, let's face it, Deshaun, for, there's a variety of reasons why it happened, but the bottom line is he didn't play well in the overall for these six games. Is there any fear in the organization that he may not get back to being the player he was in Houston? No, there's no fear about that right now whatsoever. Uh, but I think everyone recognizes 
that um, that they have to gear everything towards making sure that he has what he needs, right. that he is supported um, both schematically and from a personnel standpoint, uh, that he is communicating very, very effectively with Kevin Stefanski. And the thing that Deshaun Watson has got to do right from the outset, right from, and I think they probably started this yesterday, is he's got to speak up. Uh, Baker Mayfield never really felt like he was heard, even though Kevin says he's got this open door policy. Uh, you know, these guys have to make sure that they are being 100% honest with how they feel about a situation, even if they're worried about the repercussions of what they say. They have to say it. They've got to speak up. So if Deshaun Watson saw, you know, too much of this or not enough of that or areas of the personnel that need to be bolstered, he's got to talk about that. He's got to talk about it now, and he's got to be completely honest with how he feels. Uh, if he's worried about, you know, the play calling or that they don't have enough receivers, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, he he really has to be forceful uh, in getting that out. Yeah, man. I, I, I've I've been looking at the all twenty two. I've, I've already started to go back and look at, um, you know, the first few games with Deshaun Watson. And one of the things that I see is there, there's there's still a lot of, of plays where it doesn't seem like there's much vertical action. Um, everything is really condensed. Everything is really close. Everything is under you know, you know, seven to 10 yards. It just seems like the playbook has not opened up. And do you agree that Deshaun, if Deshaun Watson doesn't like a play or doesn't like a certain formation, him and Kevin Stefanski, I don't care if they have to get bunk beds because they are tied at the hip. If this does not work with with Deshaun Watson, Stefanski won't 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 make it out. Um, do you believe that this offseason that will make major changes to the playbook and, and when you come back to training camp, you'll see a lot new different wrinkles and a, and a new identity for the Cleveland Browns. I think so. And Deshaun Watson even talked about that yesterday. I, my headline was that he thinks the offense will be totally different. Now, he might not mean necessarily schematically. He might mostly mean that he's going to be a lot better in this scheme once he knows it and once he understands it and once he understands the nuances of his receivers and you know where they like the ball placed on their body on a fade route or whatever um, and that Kevin Stefanski will know better how to call plays for him or how much uh, you know they should use up tempo or you know go to the no <coughs> huddle whatever the case may be so I really think that uh, Deshaun is going to take more ownership of this offense and, um, you know, I do think that you'll probably see a, a different philosophy, a little bit of a shift. And if they all put their heads together and they decide that maybe there's somebody else that should be calling the place, Kevin would be open to that. I'm not saying that's going to happen because I think that Kevin wants to call the plays uh, once he finally has a full off season with Deshaun and a full training camp and, and, and really have a season with him to be able to do that. But he's, you know, he's all about the team, just like everybody else is and um, or everybody else should be. And um, and he, you know, he'll do whatever it takes. So if it if they all put their heads together and decide that perhaps someone else should be calling the plays next season, then, you know, then they'll come to that conclusion and, and he would do that. I don't see it happening right now, uh, but it's something that he will at least consider. Mary Kay, three players. I'm curious to know if you think they're going to be back next year. Kareem Hunt, John Johnson the third, and Jedrick Wills. Jedrick Wills. Jedrick Wills, yes. In fact, I think they probably will pick up his fifth year option because I don't think the fourteen million dollars that it is for a player uh, for a first round pick in that category that hasn't made play bo Pro Bowls, uh, I don't think that's exorbitant for him. So I think they will do that. Um, John Johnson the third. When you look at his thirteen and a half million dollar. A cap hit for next year. You always look to guys like that that are in those double digit millions. You match it up with the production that they've had so far and you decide if that's the amount of money that you're going to be able to pay them. So I think he would either be a candidate for restructuring or you have to look at uh, the June 1st consideration of after June 1st, uh, you know, your dead cap money would only be about 3.75 compared to 12 point something now uh, and your cap savings would be in the $9.7 million range. I wrote about that in my uh, Browns insider for Sunday. So they're going to look at that number and decide right player, right price. And I'm sure they'll sit down with his agent and try to work something out. Uh, but he's somebody to look at. And then Kareem Hunt, as of right now, 
and I've been writing this all season long. I think he will be permitted to walk. He will go out and he will see what he can get on the open market. And if it makes sense for him to come back at, uh, you know, at a lower contract with perhaps some incentives in it, then, you know, then maybe they'll all discuss that. But right now, the first thing that will happen is he will become a free agent and he will be allowed to go test the market. One more, Ethan Posick. Yes, they'll bring him back. Uh, he absolutely solidified the center position. You don't know what Nick Harris is going to be coming off a major reconstructive knee surgery. So Ethan Posick will be back. And I was going to ask you about Nick. If Ethan's back, does Nick just slide back into a backup role? Perhaps, yes. Um, you know, I think that, that Ethan really earned the job and got the experience and already had a ton of starting experience. So re really, you know what you have there. And when we talk about hitting the ground running with Deshaun, you know, you can't be experimenting with certain positions. If you know you've got a good thing there, I think you roll with it. One more before we let you go, Mary Kay, and we certainly appreciate your work throughout this football season. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a joy and really insightful having you on. But one of the things that you touched about briefly there is the salary cap position. And I know that they're always moving parts to that. And guys like Johnson and his future will have something to do with where the Browns sit from a space standpoint. But if you had to give this team a letter grade as to how they're positioned with the cap moving into 2023, A being perfectly positioned, F being it's going to be a nightmare. Where are they in your view? Well, I would say probably around a B right now, but um, you know, they are extremely brilliant capologists and they know how to move that money around. And that is why you saw the, the base salaries of guys like Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper reduced to minuscule amounts this year uh, so that they could make sure that they could add other guys to the team and do what they needed to do. So I think they'll do the same thing heading into next season. Uh, you might see some reduced bases, some upfront money for guys, uh, some things stretched out over a few more years, but they know how to do that. They are some of the best in the business at it. So I would give them a good solid B that can climb up to an A. Wow, that's great news. Mm. Mary Kay, thanks. We appreciate thanks. it. Yeah, yeah, excellent great job this year. Mary Kay, thank well, you. Uh, I know your offseason is non-existent, yeah. but uh, <laughs> as we go through our offseason, if we need you, we'll reach out for sure. And uh, we you, look Mary forward Kay. to seeing you soon. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, guys. I really enjoyed it. it. Thanks, you know what's interesting By the way, is, real quick, yeah, Jay, 